50 cam trailer. So this is the X1 which I'm towing. I'll run you through the tent uh, when we rock up on a daytime camp. <laughs> I'll show you when I pull that out. Quite spacious though, it's got a king size bed in it. More on it later. The Torben's rocking the brand new ARB Skydome. Was that your third night in the swag mate? It is a third night. Third night. Yep. Setting it up in the dark. Third night setting it up. Third time setting it up in the dark. Yep. <laughs> oh, you'd be an expert at it in daytime then. Yeah. And Trav is using AOS. An AOS swag. So you had that for a while, eh? Yeah, maybe fifteen years. Fifteen. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, it's one of the very first. Ten jobbies. Goes alright. Yeah, very well, happy. When was the last time you went camping? Like, 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 like this kind of camping? Oh, a while ago. Too long ago. Yeah. I forgot how good it is actually. <laughs> it's pretty good, isn't it? It's nice and relaxing. I forgot what day it is. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Days don't matter out here. And Wayne's camp. Morning. Sarah in the top there. <laughs> Did you get hot up there this morning? Uh, I got a little toast here, but um, now the wind's picked up, it's pretty good. Okay. Yeah. All right, we'll definitely have to run through all your new stuff here. This is this is pretty cool. Yeah. Seems to be something new to talk about every time when you're on your vehicle. <laughs> yeah, that's good. All right, so Wayne is on breakfast duties. Again. Again. <laughs> Are you on it yesterday too, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, it's hard to No way up here. Don't mind cooking. Gotta keep the boys moving. Here's a good breakfast, chef. <laughs> right, so the whole idea behind this um, camper trailer here, uh, the X1, is so we, we're using this as like a communal hub. So we're all cooking around it. We're all using, uh, you know, we're all doing breakfasts in the morning. Um, we've got six meals that we're catering for six people. And then the rest of the time, there's four of us using uh, the whole facility here. 
So this is a communal fridge as well. And that's the whole idea behind it. Now I'm just a lucky one that gets the king size 120 mil mattress, I believe it is, uh, in here. Um, however, it is a bit of setting up. So this trailer here is actually for, I'd say a family of four, because there is a kids room that goes on it and stuff, which I've left at home to reduce the weight. Um, now, do I own this? No, I don't. I just borrowed it just to test it out. So that's that's the beauty of what I do. I, I get to the opportunity to test these things out. Now, it's probably not the ideal trailer for one bloke to sleep in and use it, but as a whole community using it as a hub, it's pretty cool. I get to sleep like a king. We ate like kings last night, didn't we, Wayne? Oh, yeah. Three kilo pork. Yeah, Fred. <laughs> Three kilo pork. <laughs> All right, well I'm gonna get out of Wayne's way so he can cook breakfast and uh, then we'll run through the map before we head off today and uh, we'll hit the Ambidore Highway again. Rightio folks, well, while the rest of the crew are packing up, I'll run you guys through the whole plan, like the entire plan, real quick. So, we started in Laverton yesterday and we're now on our way to Kubapiti, which is over here. We've had to join two maps together to get the whole distance. Now yesterday we only did about 100 and, oh, we did about 250 kilometers into 1,348. And just looking at this map here, we have a long, long way to go. So this is one of the most, I think it's the second most remote track in Australia. Um, it's funny that, because then, Western Australia has two of them. Well, this is one. This one's shared by South Australia. So, if you're going to do something like this, you really need something like that. This phone here, we are going to need if we've got to call ahead for the the Ilkirka Roadhouse, which is an indigenous community. We'll need to phone ahead and let them know if we're coming in. So, we really better get a move on and look each day. We'll have a look at this map and uh, and see what's coming up. But we have a long, long way to go. I'll tell you more about this actual track, or well, the highway. It's a bit of a bit of a sick joke, really, calling it a highway. I'll tell you more about why this was actually built and why it actually exists here in the first place. So, let's get out of here. Less traveled, we're taking the scenic route around. It's adding about nine kilometers to the trek, probably sucking an extra couple of liters of fuel, too. I've got to say, it's very, very slow going. Uh, no one's done this for I don't know how long. Um, all you can see is animal tracks and all the water erosion that's come down. Uh, so, I just want to touch on the trailer to put some good points in about how it tows and stuff because it's probably it might be a little bit negativity thought about it because of that fuel um, water tank that's cracked but um one positive thing about it though is they've been smart enough to make two water tanks so if one cracks you still got another tank I was concerned about it to start with because I wasn't sure how it worked but yeah there are two separate tanks so we still have 70 liters and there's still water in the um, tank that's cracked so it's leaking quite leaking quite slow actually uh. In terms of how it's tracking first impressions, really good. I've now lowered the tires even more. Um, I probably had too high pressure yesterday. 
I lost two cans of Red Bull in the back of the trailer from things getting slammed around a bit, but now that I've packed it properly, it all seems to be going quite well. So we'll touch back on this halfway through the, through the trip, how the trail is going and towards the end as well. Um, and uh, we'll see if there's any challenging sections coming up for it and we'll see how well it tracks through that. All right, I'm gonna give it a go now and I'll let you know what it's like. You might all be able to convoy over it. So we're about to, about to cross some water. Well, everything looked dry, but things are really wet on this back track here. So we had no idea what we were going to be in for. This is a second bit of water course here. Um, it was a bit sluggish going through. I probably went a bit too slow, made it through, so I advised um, Wayne to put his lockers on. With those mechanical lockers, you got to kind of go left to right a bit. So he went one foot to the left of the track and he has sunk in. So that just goes to show what I always say is when you are near these water courses and you're doing a river crossing or water crossing, always stick to the track because that is the firmest place. So just one foot off the side, he sank in. So we're now going to get the winch on the back of him to pull him back out. Hopefully it doesn't get any worse because we are closing in on a halfway point on this little detour. So hopefully we don't regret coming in here. Okay, so the worst part is coming up. This this big salt lake we've got to go through. If it looks underwater, I think we're gonna to have to turn around and go back out, but also kind of feel half committed because that section we went through there, it just got worse and worse. And um, you saw the speed that Torben had to go through. Honestly, if he didn't come through that fast, he wouldn't have made it across because Travis just about went down. I'm glad I I'm first through because had I been last, there's no way I would have made it across yeah, that. Um, so if we have to go back to those, that way again, it's going to be pretty interesting. I might, we might have to daisy chain it through, I think. But uh, hopefully, hopefully it's alright up ahead.
sometimes having a drone really really helps I'm actually standing on the track it's like a high tide track it doesn't look like a track but it's because of all the water erosion so we came in there further up there it's kind of splits a bit uh, Wayne and Sarah just walked around on the track Wayne's now going to hop in front of me uh, on my request he has a D-ring on the back, so if I get stuck, he can pull me. If, if I get, if he gets stuck, I can pull him back, and then we can re retreat if need to be. So we're going to push on and go through because we really don't want to go through that sloppy hole back there. We think, we're thinking, we're hoping this is an easier way. Plus, we don't really want to backtrack um, just due to time and fuel. I'm just taking up slack. Winching. Yeah, I'm out. Uh, came out of my own steam on the end there. <laughs> I have to. Yeah, oh, if I go any slower, I'm gonna sink. we're having is we don't want to drive back into the soft stuff so we've got a rather long extension strap here onto almost all of Torben's winch rope we left one spool on the drum you can get away with eight laps on the drum but we just go over one full spool it's just safer you can go mate just just tell them to stop yeah stop okay well, hopefully this is the worst part because um, otherwise we're going nowhere, nowhere fast. We've done about 10 kilometers today. We need to do 244. Film slow down. So Torben's winch has packed it, really not going well today. So we're going to use a pulley block and Trav's going to use his winch on his car. We're going to go a double arm pull because that's 
we think it was too much load on his winch. That's the first, third time we had to winch him um, today with his winch, so we just killed it. Gloves are there too, it's probably beyond gloves now anyway. Alright. Two dead winches. Two, oh yeah, two dead winches. So Wayne's winch is dead, now mine's dead. Not bad for a five year old winch. What was your winch? Uh, I think it's like a dominator or something like that. Okay. So, and it's and done a lot of work. And Wayne's is an Iron Man. No, that was his old one, wasn't it? No, I still got the Iron Man. Oh, okay. So it's the battle of my worn versus the TJM winch. Mm. <laughs> Hopefully we don't lose either of those. Uh, problem is now we are committed. We cannot go back the way we came. If we go back the way we came, we're just going to make it so much worse. And um, so many areas I wouldn't want to pass pass over anymore. Like it needs to dry up. It needs to firm up. It is so. Well, what we just did. So then, soft. There's no way going back. Not in the next couple of months. Nah. Hey, I'll put. Uh, I'll go behind Torben. I'll put Torben between uh, me and you, Ronnie. Just so. Um, Please, get another winch. Yeah, copy. I don't know how I'm going to do much more, but... Travis stepped off the edge of the track just before it, sank his boot. Um, yeah, look at the ground. It's a bit slippy, so we're not going to go fast. We're going to take it easy, nice and easy. We've got to bend, we got to do. If we go too fast, we're going to slide off. We're going to be in all kinds of crap, and we're going to completely stuff it for everyone else behind us. So we're just going to take it slow. Wayne's going to go first. Good luck, Wayne. Yeah, We've got absolutely. no choice. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, is either going to be better for you at the back or worse? <laughs> I'll take, uh, I reckon I'll go the worst bit. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what happens. Alright. It's alright. I want my shoes back. <laughs> <laughs> I just told him if I have to recover him, I have his shoes. <laughs> bit stuck. <laughs> That's actually really scary. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Good job. Oh, and it's seeping in. Oh, this is gonna, this is gonna be long. Oh, that's, shite! That's why we have to stay on the track. <laughs> that wasn't even a foot off the track. Hey, I know. <laughs> Talk to me, Wayne. Talk to me, Wayne. Yeah, there's one, uh, one soft touch in the middle there, um, but it's not too bad. Yeah, okay. So there's a guy without a trailer. You'll, uh, you'll be able to see it. It goes like a little dark, and that's where I just give it a bit of boot hole. 
Yeah, copy that. I won't give it boot for I'll give it momentum beforehand. So the auto up has done all right so far. It looks like it's the sand bit's just over there. Like, look, the yeah, terrain we just, changes. We just have to cross this bit. Yeah, it's just this bit. This is the last bit we've got to cross, then we are past the worst part. And then there's that other small salt lake we go near. Hopefully that's nothing. <laughs> oh, my heart's pumping then. Man, I was, don't you worry, I was stressing too much. Second man. gear low, two and a half to 275 the whole way. I tried to engage front locker, but it didn't go in, but I was rear locker the whole way. I had heaps of traction even with the trailer. I think actually um, it was worse for Wayne. I think he took the top off. All right, after watching Ronnie turn up all the black soot in this water, made me a little bit nervous so with no winch or lockers wish me luck Turns out that Salt Lake was a lot more intimidating than what it was in difficulty getting across. However, our major concern was if one of us were to slip slightly off that track, we all know what's going to happen. Past 2 p.m. We started at 10 a.m. this morning and we've done 25 kilometers. We've got another 220 to go. Um, yeah, this detour was a was a bit of a very one, I gotta say.
Well, that took a while, and hopefully that was the longest 40-kilometer stretch that we would have to do along this entire 1,300 kilometers. Because if there's any more like this, we will not make it out with the fuel that we have. And that was part of our concern on that slight detour. So from here on, we're back on the Amberdell Highway. And thanks to Torben's little oven, it is snack time or lunch time. All right, Wayne, what are you doing to show me? Ah, oh, just a uh, new table. Hey, that, you, you yeah, extended cool. the size of your tailgate. Yeah. Ho oh, ho, oh, look out. Thanks. How come you pull this out last night? Oh, there's no reason to. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So is this food grade still? Yep. I was saying I say, Dingo did a pretty good job. Or a cup all the men. Yep. Yeah, I'll see. Pretty cool, hey? That's awesome. Oh, yeah, these lights are the ones you showed me before, eh? Hey? Yeah, yeah. We'll have to have a look at them tonight. <laughs> yeah. That's the first day in a couple days. Lots of drawers here. So, lunch stops on these long tracks, this is a result of them. I'll take it. Yeah. Something quick to pull out and just prepare. Yeah, a fair bit of planning. What have we got here? Just closed drawers. Oh, closed drawers in this one? Yep, no one. That's mine. Mine and hers. <laughs> you say mine and his? <laughs> hers. Hers, okay. <laughs> but they're both yours. That's, that's, that's what dirty, you're trying to say. <laughs> nice colour, Wayne. <laughs> Ah, see, I'm not the only one wearing Ugg boots. <laughs> I didn't bring any, I wish I brought some though. Here's Torben's quick lunch stop. <laughs> I know, that was in my nose. So that just wedges into those slots you cut there? Yep. And nice new and fridge. Strong. New fridge. Let's pull the fridge out. How big is that? It's an 80 litre dual zone from okay. Techni Ice. 80 litres? Yep. Oh, that's huge. And it's a proper dual zone. So I'm running freezer. Oh, so it's got two motors in it? No, one motor. But, um, yeah. Awesome. Mm, pizza. Really? Just, uh, you're going to spin it around? Because your lid's opening opposite side to your table. No, it doesn't matter for the table. It's okay. just easier for me to get to. All right. So I'm happy to walk around when we are using the table. Good progress on the Amberdell Highway, considering the time we lost out there. But hey, it's all part of the fun. Um, sitting at about 50, 60 kilometres per hour, every now and then 70. Um, no tracks in front of us, which is really awesome. We may have this situation for the whole entire 1,300 kilometres which really emphasizes how remote this area is. Uh, look, mind you, it has been closed for quite a while, and what we're driving in now kind of resembles a riverbed. Very smooth, um, but I guess the danger for us is we can't get complacent with speed, and uh, we may hit some washouts without being able to stop, especially me tying a trail off. And we could easily drive around this, around that way. Two reasons why you shouldn't do that. You're creating an extra track around it when you can simply just get out and move this stuff. And two, if it's soft on the edge, which it probably is, you're going to sink down. That one's broken, I can drag it. Sure. Oh, I love your shoes, mate. <laughs> Japanese safety boots. Oh. 
guy. One of the most important bits to remove are these little sticks here, because they're the ones that will give you growth. 